Hi folks, we'll get started in just a minute. Uh, we'll allow a, a little bit more time for people to join. Okay, hello everyone. Welcome to our the latest uh, LF networking webinar. Today we're going to be speaking with Deutsche Telekom. They're going to be talking about uh, how Deutsche Telekom deploys ONAP in Oran Town. Um, before we do introductions, just a couple of housekeeping items. Um, attendees will be muted throughout the presentation. However, if you have a question, uh, there is a little Q&A dialog box to the right on the bottom of your screen. Feel free to type a question in that box at any time. Um, we will reserve some time after the presentation to answer some questions live. Uh, the panelists may also be typing responses in real time as well. A recording of this webinar and the slides will be available in the coming days. So if you've registered for the event, uh, then you will get an email shortly afterwards directing you to uh, the content where it's accessible. All right, uh, without further ado, uh, let's click to the next slide and I'll introduce our panelists and we can get started. So all from Deutsche Telekom, uh, we've got Andreas Geisler, Mark Fiedler and Sebastian Zeschlin. Uh, they're gonna be speaking to us today um, about ONAP in Oran Town. I will go ahead and hand it over to Sebastian. So, hello everyone. Um, very warm welcome also from, from my side, uh, here from Germany, from Deutsche Telekom. Um, uh, thank you for your interest and your participation uh, in, in our webinar. And um, as Jill said, uh, today we'd like to introduce a bit um, our journey, uh, how we use ONAP NDT and what we do uh, with it in, in the context of access disaggregation and how we build a service management and orchestration solution in the ORAN context. So, but before we start, uh, I'd like to mention two things to you. So fantastic news, uh, the latest release of uh, ONAP has been launched today, ONAP Istanbul. So um, really great success uh, to the community and I'd like to thank also everybody who has contributed to that once again. And uh, Andreas will also then talk a bit uh, later on how we plan to use Istanbul as well. And uh, the second, the second thing I'd like to mention is um, that uh, after the webinar, we will have a, a DT user story page uh, available um, uh, on the Linux Foundation networking site, uh, where you can find uh, more te text documents about uh, our user story and also a longer version of uh, our case study, which will be uh, soon on its way. And with that, I'd like to come to my first slide here. Um, I'd like to give you a bit of context uh, where this project um, uh, DT ONAP or TNAP as we call it is embedded. So it's embedded in a program um, which is larger called network differentiation. So uh, how does De Deutsche Telekom plan uh, to build the networks of the future? And you can see on the right hand side uh, that we have colleagues dealing with uh, disaggregation of networks uh, in order to drive flexibility and scalability and also uh, to give a new push to the ecosystem. We have colleagues uh, uh, working on the cloudification uh, of things, uh, on software-defined networks, and of course, uh, also uh, we'd like to leverage uh, open APIs uh, in the future a lot. But uh, this group uh, you are, um, uh, or we are belonging to um, has then, uh, we think one of the key obligations, and that would be uh, to master all these uh, future um, or all these complexity coming and resulting from um, uh, these um, uh, things like disaggregation and cloudification you see. As you can imagine, integrating a black box uh, solution coming from one vendor is a pretty easy task as compared to a disaggregated network where you would have 
several network functions to, to integrate. And also, of course, I'd like to mention the speed of change, which is uh, quite different as we compare um, our networks from the past with the networks of the future. And uh, so you can read it. Uh, our belief is um, mastering the network automation is really key uh, in, in order to enable the benefits coming from um, this network differentia uh, differentiation from the software defined cloudified disaggregated networks. And then we asked when we started this uh, journey into, into open source, we, we also asked the question, what would be uh, the best production model um, for a network automation uh, system? And um, you can believe me, we have, uh, we have tried out uh, everything you can, you can see in the tech cloud. Um, uh, we have done an in-house development. We, um, uh, of course, are talking to the vendors, the good old RFI, RFQ. Um, story. We are looking into uh, partnerships with hyperscalers. We think uh, of model-driven software, and and one uh, option, of course, uh, is the open source. And uh, uh, of course, all of these have in common that in case, uh, in any case, we want to be able uh, to shape. Uh, the services we provide uh, to our customers ourselves because we think that's a strategic asset of a future um, uh, operator of a really software defined telco and um, uh, and therefore i'm i'm glad to have um, uh, mark and andreas uh, today with me who will uh, guide us and give us a bit more information on how we leverage open source uh, in the context of uh, oran so the open radio access network. Over to you, Mark. <laughs> Thank you, Sebastian. Welcome also from my side. Uh, my name is Mark Fiedler, as introduced uh, in the beginning. And I'm the one who is yeah, providing some insights today about our, let's say, challenges in the radio access network area um, to provide a bit an in, in, in outlook for the, for, the, for the next slides also then uh, provide um, giving you some insights about what we are doing in this famous Oran town and how the SMO, the service management and orchestration framework uh, will hopefully help us to push uh, in that area of, of Oran. But first things first, um, basically um, we as Deutsche Telekom see a, a couple of challenges in the existing radio access network. Um, and I hope, or I guess it's not uh, just for Deutsche Telekom, it's about the whole ecosystem uh, and for the operator that we see uh, that we need to improve and to need to challenge uh, our yeah, entire ecosystem in the way uh, that we want to improve, um, let's say, the number of uh, vendors where we can uh, integrate and choose from the market. Uh, I think that is a general uh, challenge we are facing in the industry. Um, besides uh, the ecosystem topic, um, a radio access network in entirely is a really costly uh, technology, which compared to the flexibility and innovation power we have today, potentially has not the right uh, amount of, of uh, yeah, flexibility in that area. Furthermore, we see as well with the modernization of uh, the network, uh, there's a a lot of cumbersome uh, challenges in, in, in that area uh, by modernize uh, those technology and having then a, a really costly RAN swap uh, at the end, which is something we need to improve entirely. And last but not least, uh, as I said in the beginning, um, compared to the flexibility uh, and the innovation power, we need to improve um, tremendously. Please go to the next slide. Um, to improve or basically to, to start um, challenging this whole thing, we started a program in DT, which is called uh, the access disaggregation um, and is really compared and, and, and jointly an activity we are doing uh, in the Oran area. What we want to introduce here as well today is uh, that we have three sweet spots where we want to focus in this entire disaggregation story um, where we see one of the, or mainly the biggest uh, um, challenges uh, in that area. The first one is to disaggregate uh, the functions um, in that area to pick and choose a specific solutions 
um, in this example here to inter introduce and integrate radio units um, from different vendors compared to what we had in the past on the BBU uh, area, um, the DU and the CUs. That's the first thing. The second thing is the general aspect uh, to decoupling software and hardware functions. Uh, you know, in the past, we had this famous black box solutions where we had introduced an entire a technology stack from a vendor, um, starting from the hardware up to the software and also to the management system on top. And last but not least, and that's exactly at the topic for today, um, that we want to introduce an independent management framework where, see, where we see as Deutsche Telekom as well one of uh, the biggest challenges to push this and having the flexibility and freedom um, to integrate different network functions from different vendors and having an independent management framework available. Exactly. Um, and from an integration point of view, and that is, I guess, one of the the interesting stories, and that is what we um, give some insights here today, is how or what is required to leverage the benefits from that excess disaggregation story. And what we see is here that uh, the operating model needs to change, and as well from an integration responsibility. Um, with the integration of this uh, uh, software stacks, we see also a shift of the responsibility that we had in the past on the vendor side, which is then going more in the direction of the operator side. That's nothing what we can do overnight and something we need to prepare ourselves carefully. Um, with the layering of technologies, and that's exactly the beautiness of this, let's say, um, disaggregation uh, story um, coming from the uh, independent cloud technology and platform technology we, we want to use. Um, deploying uh, cloud native and, and um, physical network functions on it and want to manage them independently. That's exactly the approach where we want to, to open the ecosystem, introduce new vendors in that market uh, to having the flexibility to have a new operating model approach available. And exactly that was the motivation to say, okay, we want to prove exactly those technologies and those um, architecture and that is why Deutsche Telekom has selected um, a city in Germany um, to prove the technology, start deploying those technology and see how this technology can provide those benefits we have seen or this expected benefits we have seen on the slide before um, and starting leveraging this operating model and start learning from what is implemented and um, to, to push further the um, the ecosystem, work with the ecosystem, but also with the open source communities uh, to get new features and get the robustness and stability of what we have today in the network. Next slide. So then it's uh, again my turn, I guess. Um, so what, what was important? What were the strategic guidelines um, uh, we were laying out when we were uh, starting to de design our DT um, service management and orchestration solution. So um, very important is uh, open standards. Uh, so the ORAN and uh, 3GPP, uh, they define, of course, the standards which we, uh, in the end, uh, uh, need, to, need to implement and need to, um, uh, need to work with. And, um, uh, for sure, we are also um, present in, in those uh, organizations and pushing forward uh, the standards, which we, in the end, uh, in practice, then also implement. Open interface uh, and models, uh, that's, of course, uh, the second cornerstone uh, we've been laying out. Um, uh, so the data models uh, and interfaces in order uh, uh, to manage the upcoming complexity should be, of course, in the end, also um, what we want to have and um, yeah of course a state-of-the-art technology so it's also about um, uh, when we manage the future network we want to have a future-proof architecture for uh, the network and service management functions which uh, we in, in our case uh, found by using uh, components from uh, the open network automation platform uh, as uh, Andreas will also show um, a, a bit later 
and uh, you can read uh, the goal which we uh, which we want to uh, achieve in the end. Um, so we want to be uh, independent and yet want to have that integrative approach um, when we think of managing uh, the network of the future, uh, be it cloudified, uh, but of course also uh, be it um, disaggregated as in the case of Opa. Back to you, Mark. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Now coming back a bit more to um, what behind uh, what is behind the SMO concept and um, why we have decided to use ONAP uh, for this approach uh, to, to develop a solution uh, for the SMO. I'm not sure how many of you are um, deeply involved in the discussions about uh, the pros and cons, the benefits, and how to yeah, implement such SMO concept uh, as it's written here in the headline uh, to this technology stack of, of radio access networks. It's, it's a really complex topic. And we know that um, this management functions were typically placed on the vendor side. And that is something which were delivered entirely with the technology stack. Uh, and that was basically uh, well proven and integrated. But exactly as I uh, introduced at the beginning, we as an operator want to pick and choose mainly which vendor, which technology solutions we want to layer, we want to stick uh, to, to an entire network um, to, to be independent. And for that, as I said, we also want to need to have an independent management framework, which allows us also to modernize our OSS landscape tremendously, because simply we saw that the, uh, the technology is costly and mostly also the, the OSS uh, tools are basically not the ones which are uh, built on a greenfield approach, let's say it like that. So that means there's a couple of um, improvement items visible. But coming back to, to the SMO concept, the service management and orchestration platform um, is aimed to cover the entire life cycle of the cloud native functions in the sense of uh, access disaggregation. We want to cover the uh, mainly the CU and DU uh, functionality, so central unit distributed units, and as well the PNF functions around the radio units. Uh, which will be inter uh, integrated and connected to the uh, controllers and the architecture. Um, to have a starting point, we as Deutsche Telekom has mainly focused in the beginning of this famous FCAPS functionality, so fault config, accounting, performance and security uh, capabilities to prove the operational, uh, um, uh, on the one hand side, um, stability, but also from a functional point of view, uh, if we or is Deutsche Telekom able to manage with this SMO um, MVP uh, the technology stack in the old run town? So that was mainly the, the target we had. And then we focused uh, basically on this FCAP functionalities. But I want to introduce a bit more and more in detail uh, from a functional point of view, what we basically did or what, what our ambition level is. Um, for sure, we need to implement and integrate a specific service design for this 4G and 5G services we want to roll out for our customers. Uh, with that, uh, we want to have an entire automated day zero and day one configuration, also known as the instantiation process of this physical and virtual devices or cloud native devices, and then providing um, an initial configuration for those uh, to be able to operate uh, and uh, integrate those network functions. Uh, in production state. To be able to, to understand the heal and uh, the, the, uh, yeah, the heal status, let's say in this way, uh, we focused as well on the uh, integration and calculation of uh, performance counters. Um, we use mainly uh, this um, street GPP term uh, to calculate uh, the, the performance counter here in this way, but also um, using the best format to be able to receive all these metrics. Uh, in an independent manner and integrated independent state between the network functions and the management framework. Um, automation uh, is, is a clear target we have for sure. Um, and one of the, the first integration is also that we do work that we work on a specific automation cases uh, for radio access network to provide quality enhancement and stability from an SMO point of view, it's not just the blurry and simple, um, let's say the zero day one configuration of those, it's also the uh, life cycle and the optimization 
of the life cycle of those network functions. Okay. Next slide. And yeah. with that, I want to kindly hand <laughs> over to Andreas. Yeah, welcome also from my side. Um, here we have another view on the uh, Oran SMO architecture. Um, so we have um, already, we have some, um, of course, defined interfaces between the SMO function and the network and the components itself. So you see where there is the, the O1 and O2 interface and as well um, the um, um, open front hall interface uh, towards the radio units. We are trying to focus as uh, already Mark said on specific, um, let's say functions here, not covering all of them at the moment. Um, but what we want to, what, what I want to point out here that we also try to um, uh, cover different deployment scenarios, for example, um, so between radio and aggregation sites, so DU deployments um, on different sites and R and CU deployments. So that is what also what we try to achieve and try to show here. Um, we will, as Mark already said, um, uh, instantiate the service, uh, so the, the, the uh, cloud native functions uh, via the um, uh, Kubernetes interfaces, Vim interfaces uh, through the O2 interface and configure them uh, via the O2 and uh, um, the open front hole interface um, from the SMO side. And on the other hand, receive the data from the elements then uh, via the uh, also one best interface or less controller interface. Can you go to the next slide? Um, the next slide is showing basically the architecture of the TNAP platform. So it um, the TNAP platform is targeted, um, or the target for that is to be a platform which can be used not only for this use case, but it should be also uh, be a platform used for other uh, future use cases. So the first use case, as we see it here, is of course then the Oran case. So then we have to do some adaptions accordingly. Um, the SMO here, as you see, and with the blue um, squares, you see this is these are the components we take from the ONAP uh, community for the from the ONAP platform. Um, currently, um, we are uh, using the Honolulu release, and uh, what Sebastian already mentioned um, today, or let's say at the end of the week. We have now the new release, so the Istanbul release out, and we are now also planning uh, in the next uh, weeks or coming weeks then uh, also to upgrade then this platform to the next release um, to be on the, on the latest versions. Uh, we try to be, let's say, use the components as they are. Um, in, and try to, let's say, feedback uh, as a, let's say, from the concept point, we are trying to involve, be involved in the, this open source community, of course, and we are already, uh, we are giving them any, uh, let's say, fixes and enhancements, try to give them back to the community. That's our, our basic focus here. Um, so the um, additional components we'll have to develop for that uh, are here marked with the, with the magenta color. So as uh, Mark already mentioned, so we will have an own portal for that. Uh, we will have um, a enhanced, um, let's say, manage, uh, so, so uh, fault and performance management functionality, which is here named DCIE plus, for example, where we have a long-term storage for events, for alarms and the visualization as well, we integrate them as well to the portal. On the southbound side, we are using um, 
the SDNC or in CDS components for the um, uh, configuration. So using the O2 or kind of O2 in O1 interface, sorry, uh, ORAN O1 interface towards the net elements for the configuration updates. Um, we are using the SO and multi cloud adapter um, towards the um, um, VIM, so all the Kubernetes interfaces uh, for the instantiation and the, the um, lifecycle management of the cloud native functions and receiving basically um, alarms um, at the moment here or via the desk collector. And as an addition, we also um, try to do maybe a, a Kafka to Kafka integration um, if it's um, useful for the VES int integration here. We have a little slight differences as well in the deployment of the ONAP components and TNAP components. We're doing a little bit of a different approach uh, using also open source tools like the Argo. We, um, uh, we are using, of course, our own repositories uh, from the Deutsche Telekom um, to deploy um, the software in our um, uh, clouds um, uh, infrastructure, actually. Um, so basically, uh, this is uh, how, how we use it. And of course, it will be also evolve over the time. So you see, we, will ha we have currently something like a, a, a config management. So we receive data from um, the DT, the Deutsche Telekom, run planning um, uh, components, we have to, let's say, use this data when setting up the, um, um, the run uh, elements and configuring them. Currently, we are using an own kind of self-made config management, what we are, let's say, check, for example, to use the, um, the uh, new CPS component of, o, uh, of ONAP and most likely there will be other components to be added in the future like OF or other ones which could be useful um, for the uh, functionality of the SMO. Um, yeah, so this is basically our, our overview of uh, what uh, we wanted to show you here. And um, yeah, the next slide would be then the sum up slide from Sebastian. Uh, thanks, Andreas. And uh, um, yeah, uh, the, the SMO part is, is really uh, our first example. Uh, maybe uh, Andreas is very modest. Before we started um, uh, our journey with the disaggregated uh, ORAN uh, piece, we were also in the laboratory. We were running several uh, tests with other um, um, with other technologies uh, reaching uh, from the core uh, functionality uh, to the transport network, uh, et cetera. So we were trialing um, different contexts already um, as it should be like when you are talking uh, of a platform. So um, uh, the, the SMO piece is really then the one we got uh, uh, the most serious with uh, taking it into, uh, into pilot production. And um, yeah, to sum it up a bit, uh, so this is already our last slide. And uh, I, I see we are great in time because we are planning a half an hour presentation and then uh, lots of time for questions uh, for you. So please feel free to enter them already in the chat. To sum it up a bit, um, as you can see, uh, the owner platform can be used in several different network uh, domains and contexts. So, uh, as I said, we have trialed it out in, in uh, several um, with uh, several network technology and uh, were successful in, in all the uh, proof of concepts and lab deployments with, with it. Um, then you definitely see uh, how the platform has matured uh, over the releases. Uh, of course, you can you can argue uh, left and right. Uh, um, it needs to be hardened uh, still, but uh, we are really uh, happy to see how the platform has evolved, how it uh, got more features over the releases, what has been added, um, and, and really uh, great success, as I mentioned before, um, for, the, uh, for the open source community, for the own up community. 
And uh, last but not least, uh, we all need to earn money and uh, open source definitely uh, from our perspective is also a means uh, to lower uh, the implementation efforts. As I was mentioning before, if everyone uh, would uh, do it on their own and do some, some in-house deployment, then um, uh, definitely that would be not the uh, optimal price point uh, you were hitting. Um, and, and therefore, uh, the, the, the goal is clear to, uh, to get on uh, some community-based approach here in order uh, also to, to lower the, the total cost of ownership of uh, such a solution. What we've learned. Um, so as I mentioned before, um, in that in those for these future networks and you can hear it probably um, uh, from everybody around uh, the globe in the industry mastering the automation is really key because this is actually where um, you create uh, the network experience for your customers and uh, as i said the complexity is definitely rising with um, uh, cloud native, uh, virtualized with uh, software defined and disaggregated networks. And uh, the point where you have to bring it together, uh, no matter which uh, solution you uh, in the end rely on is uh, the automation. Uh, and uh, definitely um, for DT, I can say, we want to differentiate uh, uh, from the competition by uh, having that automation layer under our control. Uh, then, of course, um, not sure from which business you come from, but uh, still for DT, it's relevant. Um, we need to combine uh, the network skills with the IT skills in order to uh, manage uh, software-defined uh, networks. Reads pretty easy, um, uh, almost a no-brainer, but uh, uh, we were really successful in bringing uh, people from... Um, both departments um, uh, together in order to build uh, a proper network automation. You need to have the, the tool skills, but you also need to have the process skills and the network technology uh, skills. It's really um, a rare that we would find uh, somebody who has skills uh, and is an expert in uh, radio access network technology and at the same time uh, uh, knows everything about uh, software and I IT um, and has both skills. So bring them all together, put them in, in one team, and we've been really successful in that. And then if you are ramping up such innovative technology, um, then, you know, you will hit uh, uh, several problems, challenges, and uh, you're definitely in, in a world where not everything is clear. And how do you tackle that challenge best? Um, we would recommend uh, go into agile development mode if you want to, to really leverage um, uh, open source technology and uh, uh, build innovative uh, solutions. So uh, uh, we are leveraging, in our case, the, the SAFE framework, in case you know it, SCADE Agile Framework. And uh, uh, we would really recommend because of uh, the nature of uh, A, the radio access network is not mature and B, uh, the, the management solution also is not, you know, uh, uh, something which is uh, uh, on the market for uh, like a decade or something. So uh, if you want to develop, then uh, go agile. And of course, uh, we are not doing it alone. Um, uh, so uh, it reads like partnerships are very, very helpful and uh, DT is definitely not uh, doing it alone, but um, with the help of partners. And our wish list, we are at least uh, close, uh, coming closer to, to Christmas, so time of, of wishes. Of course, we would uh, always wish, wish for uh, a richer, richer ecosystem. And uh, we were putting uh, more and more developers and contribute also to the community. Um, so really, really glad uh, to, to see that. And um, uh, but of course, uh, if if more people would uh, contribute and jump on that open source train, uh, it becomes uh, more efficient for everybody. So that's the, the belief we have. Um, means also, you know, uh, ecosystem means also uh, we wish for you know um, companies, uh, startups um, who are 
making use of open source in order to help the bigger companies um, uh, to come to better solutions. Um, plug and play integration of network functions into the platform um, still uh, I mean, in my career, looking back to um, uh, what we did uh, when uh, the automation was still called uh, OSS, um, it's always, you know, everything of uh, every kind of technology behaves a bit different and um, uh, it's really uh, always a pain uh, to integrate between vendors, between technology. So uh, a bit more plug and play uh, integration really would be helpful in order uh, uh, to lower again in the end, the cost and uh, also to lower the time to market. And of course, uh, I have to put it down here. Uh, truly cloud native network functions uh, is uh, really something we would wish for, because then uh, again, the integration and also uh, the management um, of these uh, network functions becomes uh, a lot easier. And uh, uh, the team really did take um, uh, some network functions already to the lab and, and tried to manage them. And uh, in the end, um, uh, we were still seeing, okay, there is, uh, there's also on the network function side, um, uh, still a journey and um, network functions still need to evolve in order to become really, really cloud native. And uh, I mean, uh, I think we were pointing on, on that one. Um, uh, really important is, that you define in a software defined uh, network, uh, a relevant part of the customer experience with that automation layer. And um, uh, this is really um, strategic um, where you want to have that uh, under, under your control um, one way or the other. Uh, you can do it of course, uh, also with the help of partners um, and, and vendors and commercial solutions. But this is uh, uh, really what we believe where um, uh, in the future, um, uh, the differentiation is being made. And that would be uh, just a plea for uh, the importance of the automation layer in general. With that, I'd like to, to close the, um, the presentation. I, I really hope you have enjoyed it. And um, uh, thanks again for your interest. But um, I would now, uh, be open for 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 questions, and uh, we would use uh, the rest of the hour um, for your questions. Back to you, Jill. Great, thank you, everyone. Um, yes, we do have have a handful of questions here in the window, so we'll just uh, start working through those. Um, somebody is asking uh, about integration space related to slide seven towards the beginning of the presentation. Um, slide seven was showing DT needs to do more integration compared to what was required previously. What DevOps environments is DT planning to leverage here? Is DT able to execute that whole integration by itself? It's, I really like this, uh, this question. Uh, thanks for that. Uh, basically, um, yeah, sure. Uh, it's it's a huge journey and a challenge. Um, I think we, we have a clear target to become a software defined telco. And to reach that, I think we, we need to prepare our organization for such a big move entirely. It's not just in the area of access disaggregation or providing an independent management framework. Um, and that's exactly about the, the mindset of what DevOps mean and how um, this change from, from a responsibility point of view exactly. And that is about the question. I would say we as Deutsche Telekom, we are um, working exactly on this journey, on this challenge to be able to cover those uh, efforts of our own, but as Sebastian introduced and, and shown also for sure having an ecosystem with partners uh, to cover that. Great, thank you. Um, next question, the ONAP based SMO platform does not show the non RT RIC or an A1 interface to near RT RIC. Could you please comment? Um, also a good question, uh, potentially I would uh, take that. Um, as you know, we are also uh, active in the in the ORAN Alliance um, and, and we are evaluating a lot of that. But one of the uh, key um, targets we had in, in, in Oran Town or basically in, in the uh, development of such an SMO framework was to work on this FCAPS functionalities, which were not on this real time 
uh, aspects. And I fully agree that uh, one of the biggest challenges and also improvement uh, parts in, in, in Oran is to introduce this this rig story, uh, independent if it's this non-real-time rig or near real-time rig. Um, we are currently working in the labs on introducing specific things on that. That is not publicly, and it's also not currently introduced in O-Town, um, but that's up to the discussions we had in the communities entirely. Okay, uh, thank you for that. Moving along, uh, Rani is asking, what is the total footprint of the deployed orchestrator in terms of vCPU and storage? Um, well, uh, <laughs> I think we are still, <laughs> we are still, let's say, um, verifying um when it comes then into let's say the use cases uh what will be let's say our complete um footprint here i can say that we have um as we uh, already answered part of the question so we are using virtual machines actually at the moment for the deployment on an open stack and then uh, having there a cluster uh, uh set up at the moment we are using for example 12 uh, so the, the the kubernetes cluster will have or will be based on, on 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 12 worker nodes at the moment so it will be quite quite big especially because of course we do have um uh, uh let's say also long-term storages uh, inside so elastic search and so on so of, of our own components um so currently i think i cannot see uh, tell you exactly so what is the what is the let's say a number of cpus and memory which we are using and and especially then the um uh, uh the, the, let's say the, the the data or the volumes which we which we need to do i think we will sum this up at some point and i think make this maybe um uh, uh, or, or we'll, 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 we'll provide this maybe later. So at least from a, let's say, theoretical or let's say practical one when we when we come uh, or, or see then um, the, the the working solution basically with uh, getting more and more data. So that's something which we are still investigating on. Great. Um Moving along, Carlos is asking, is suggesting, he says, if I can summarize what you're doing, you're forking ONAP to create a self-made implementation of an SMO. Will you be contributing that back to the community, build it into a different product, or keeping it internal? No, definitely we are um, we are not really forking ONAP. So we are using ONAP. Um, basically with the same kind, for example, Helm charts, which also the official own-up release is providing, so OOM is providing. And of course, we are um, trying to be more and more engaged in the community. I mean, we have already a couple of people which are contributing to the community um, as PTLs, as developers, and uh, and also including partners of us, which we are paying for, that they are contributing to a new features, additional features, and we our target is that our teams will get more and more involved in the community and uh, upstreaming then the work which we have done back to the community, definitely. So this is one of our targets in using open source software that we give back, of course, then a, let's say self-made uh, implementations back uh, also to the community. I, um, exactly, and I- yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, Mark. No, I just wanted to add, because I, I like this question in the way uh, that I would really like also to, to underline here, um, it's definitely not to just fork the code and build a product out of it. Um, it's really to, um, yeah, also enlarge uh, the community, help the community to grow in that area, and to show um, how ONAP can be used as an um, open source approach um, to implement several use cases. And SMO is one of the use cases uh, ONAP can can. Um, implement or be able to implement. So um, definitely we want to encourage more in the community as Andrea said, and uh, it's one of the beautiness of the ONAP uh, community 
to have the freedom um, to implement uh, such solutions. Yeah, and, and I wanted also to add, uh, thanks Mark for, for jumping, um, we are doing it also for our own benefit. So not only for the benefit of the community, but upstream first uh, uh, really helps later um, uh, to keep your solution clean integration wise, because if you would uh, uh, keep a fork uh, alive, uh, then we know it, it gets expensive in the end and uh, uh, really you put and waste a lot of effort. That's why why we follow really a strict um, upstream first policy. Yeah, great. Thank you for that clarification there. Um, next question, what, uh, what was the effort to develop and set up the SMO and what was the effort to develop and set up the use case? Good question. Um, yeah, in general, I think it's it's an outcome of a of a long journey. <laughs> um, that was mainly what Andreas introduced uh, between the lines. So we are, I think, since Amsterdam in the community. Um, so and honestly, we were also one of the the, the operators which were passive uh, over uh, some time and and assessed um the benefits also need to push a lot of things in the company and that was what sebastian has shown in the beginning um and we did a lot in the back uh, we did a lot with the development people a, a lot with our partners and and then um, pushing the ecosystem to come to the stage to be able to run this mvp uh in in a pre-production site and there's a more as a as a good uh, um a starting point to um also having a growing area of features and functions and and for sure we are not at the end right uh, so we are in the beginning uh, but it is also a good um, challenge to work closely with with our partners uh, and vendors um, to implement such an smo so um, i cannot tell you the, the concrete numbers of of the development and the setup of this smo uh, but the efforts were a long uh, uh, strategy cycle and the journey uh, getting the right people, getting the right structure to work on such technology stack, which is something which needs to be prepared and rolled out uh, over time. Great, thank you. Um, the next question, uh, how do you validate the integrated solution? Is it a proprietary lab or shared open source use case based testing infrastructure? Um, potentially, I will take that as well. Um, I saw also a, a generic question at the beginning about uh, can you um, yeah, participate in Oran Town? Um, good question. Um, and basically, Oran Town um, is mainly, and that is how we call it as Deutsche Telekom, is, is a city, as I said in, uh, in the beginning, is a city in Germany where we rolled out an overlay network um, based on the Oran technology. So that's something we want to run in or we run in production and provide the service to the customer. So that's nothing which is open in, in sense of other, let's say uh, partners, uh, other vendors or uh, someone who's interested to join. But a good message for that is that that we have worked uh, along the the one alliance uh, to yeah open and, and, and or having the ability to have an, an open lab. And um, that is exactly potentially you have seen this, this message, uh, um, this information which was shared um, for some weeks that we uh, jointly um, have opened this Y14Y lab. So I14Y lab, you, you can Google for that. It's a lab in Berlin, uh, which is exactly uh, for this purpose um, where we with other partners um, and consortium have, have worked on such a lab uh, to verify exactly those solutions and to have an open op openness in the industry to collaborate on those technology. Yes, and, and uh, ONAP is, of course, a part of that uh, open lab, uh, I14Y lab. Great. Um, next question from Eric. Uh, how many XNF, e.g. CU, DU, do you deploy with TNAP for this ORAN Town project? Um, yeah, mainly, um, <laughs> Eric, good question. Thanks for that. Um, the uh, um, the solution, or basically um, what we deployed, is the 4G and 5G service, and this is along the amount of sites we deploy in the city. So currently we are deploying uh, several sites, and along the sites, and depending on the uh, deployment concept, what Andreas has shown, we are running uh, CUDU and RUs. 
Um, I would not stick that specifically to one site to say, okay, we, we are, for example, deploying uh, 15 sites and then having the amount of, of um, network functions running. It's also dependent on which deployment mode is selected for the specific site. So, um, and how the scaling of uh, this network function is implemented. So that's a specific part of the solution we have there. Um, but yeah, it's exactly about the deployment of in radio units or specific radio units and uh, CUDU um, deployments. Great, thanks for that. Um, moving along, uh, could you please comment on how, where an application network management analysis is onboarded and hosted in the TNAP architecture? I think if you go for a kind of, let's say, <clears throat> control loop um, implementation, something like that, I think we will have at the moment two ways of doing that. I mean, on one hand, we will have, we will try to or focus on uh, trying to use the existing um, uh, control loop uh, functions and then the analytics functions of the DCIE component and um, but on the other hand, as we have also this kind of long-term storage and uh, um, um, <clears throat> uh, Spark um, uh, 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 components uh, inside, so runtime uh, and, and, and also long-term uh, analytics can be done on, the, um, uh, on our DCIE plus system. But um, this would be then the second option where we could add some analytics on um to uh, uh let's say have further analysis and 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 uh let's say um yeah application analysis or network analysis on that and we actually did have a have a follow-up question about tnap um folks are wondering what version of onap uh that was based on at at the moment as i said it we are based on uh, honolulu maintenance release version so this is then the latest which was <laughs> let's say uh, announced like one week before so and now uh, as i said so uh, we will have a look at and make a plan how to and when to um, update then to the next release so the istanbul release because we are also we will also require maybe some functions which are uh, existing from uh, in the from the istanbul release and uh, based on that of course we will have to check when we do the upgrade basically uh, to the Istanbul release. Yeah. Great, thank you. Um, moving along, do you have a lot of customizations, custom workflows in SO? No, we, um, <laughs> sorry, we are, our focus is uh, to use macro workflows. So we, we, are, we do not want to have specific workflows currently for that. So we are tr trying to focus completely on macro workflows and the usage of CDS actually. Um, so that means everything is, should be embedded in the, in the model itself. Uh, so we have the, the CBA packages deployed with the models uh, um, for the different components. And uh, this, uh, and we are trying to use then the, the the macro workflow. I think we might have some small additions um, uh, in the uh, uh, in the macro workflow, but generally we don't use specific workflows. Okay. Uh, this next question is a little bit long. Um, you mentioned that recently you've managed to perform ONAP upgrade to the latest upstream version. As of now, vanilla ONAP does not support at its core seamless upgrades. Did you manage to develop your own workflow slash tools to upgrade ONAP or just by upgrading, you mean plain reinstall from scratch plus data <laughs> migration from previous installs? Yeah, so uh, <laughs> that's a good question. So, um, <clears throat> We have. We are not in the situation at the moment that we um, uh, needed to, let's say, have uh, uh, real data migrations. I know that we have problems uh, current, or in ONAP there are still problems or challenges on that on that perspective. Um, we will um, focus on that. So currently, at, let's say um, we we have. Um, uh, we can do the, uh, of course, we, we were trying to do a base a new installation, but we are also uh, trying, as I said, to use Argo CD 
for upgrading the services um, and the pods and so on. So which works quite quite nicely, but of course it does not um, mean that we have uh, we, we that this supports then data migrations and something like that. And I think that's something we'll have to focus on in the in the coming sprints. And we will also then support or try to support whenever we can also the community to um, let's say. Uh, uh, let's say, uh, give our, let's say, implementations forever, uh, whatever, let's say, data migration, uh, exporting, importing stuff, uh, that we will try to give back the, that to the community or, um, let's say, discuss here on the OM team with, about that and support the OM team on that. But it's right. Um, we have not at the moment, we are not in the situation that we have, let's say, um, uh, an installation which has a um, big amount of data, which has to be then really migrated from one release to, to the other. That's, that's right at the moment. Yep. Great questions. Um, as SMO becomes mission critical, how do you deal with SLAs, OLAs for open source based solutions? Good question. Um, uh, absolutely right. Uh, I like that as well. Um, yeah, basically, uh, with that, we are back to the DevOps concept. So we, we call it uh, for the moment, or let's call it for the moment DevOps concept. Uh, for sure, behind that is a support structure, which is required to run uh, such an SMO uh, platform as a mission critical component. Uh, absolutely right. Um, so I would, would phrase the, the answer in a way that we are working on exactly on an approach to structure the L1, L2, and L3 support. Um, we have existing partners in the industry which provide exactly, uh, for example, level three support for specific ONAP components, which is also a beauty thing. And we are encourage others um, to yeah, help and push in that sense because that is simply also like the journey of access disaggregation uh, enhance the ecosystem enhance uh, the the entire industry a bit or motivate the industry to uh, to provide such services for specific things uh, to having the the ability to to select from specific uh, vendors um, a specific um, support structures but uh, the aim is to cover mostly the l1 and l2 support uh, in in dt and uh, if required, having for specific mesh critical uh, components in ONAP a level three support externally. But that depends on the component, as I said. OK, we are just about at time. Jill, I think your audio might have cut out. Seems to be. <laughs> uh, okay, as Jill was mentioning, we are uh, running out of time here. Uh, so I think we should bring things uh, to a close want to uh, thank uh, all of our panelists here for this great presentation. Uh, everyone registered for the webinar will be sent the materials uh, via email uh, by tomorrow. And for all the questions that we didn't get to today, we will uh, wrap them up and get them to our panelists and uh, get them answered for you. So thanks again for your attendance and stay tuned for more great LFN webinars. Thank you all. Thank you.